Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Advancing with Watercolor. I'm Gary Tucker, and I'm painting in the Campo San Margarita again this week. I'm doing a cafe scene with a slightly different light. This is the late afternoon light. But I want to focus again on using graded washes uh, to create the beginnings of this scene and then add detail onto that. Um, have a look at the description. There's some interesting links there. There's a uh, reference to the materials, the pigments that I'm using. And there's a link to a PDF that will give you more information on this particular painting and the way it came together. Okay, are you ready to get going? Let's go paint. Well, glad to have you back on Advancing with Watercolor. I'm extending last week's lesson where I introduced using graded washes uh, in a scene in the Campo San Margarita in Venice. I'm extending that today um, for a different view of the same Campo, a uh, different time of day, and using graded washes to create this sort of illuminated effect that you see in this painting. And it's a series of uh, several washes that combine to create this effect, and I'll demonstrate those for you today. First, this is a picture of just a simple graded wash, and I'm including a link in the description where you can see how this graded wash is created. I'm showing you a couple slides here of the directional wash going from the blue to the uh, yellow ochre. This is a primary wash that you'll see in the beginning. The direction is important. The second wash, also important to create depth of field going from a darker to a lighter in the foreground. And I'll demonstrate that as well. And then the third wash runs down, or I should say up the building, creating light bounce in the lower right hand corner, which um, is generating the sort of luminosity that we feel on a bright day um, or a transitory time in nature. So I start with a, a simple drawing, uh, not so simple actually, I'm arranging a few figures under canopies enjoying a late afternoon meal and uh, I'm going to be setting up the basic washes initially and that means applying uh, over large areas. So I'm starting with yellow ochre and a bit of cad red light uh, working top to bottom and with a pretty big brush trying to um, get this wash starting to flow and once I wet the area to my satisfaction I'll start to work in a few other colors. You notice me cutting around a a white area, that's going to be a highlight on one of the awnings, the major awning that comes over our group of people below. And so you can tell by the gloss on the paper that the wash is quite wet and this gives me time to manipulate it. It gives me time to add color or even add a little water if I should want to lighten it. But in this case I keep adding a little bit of ultramarine blue and um, then follow from the left side with a, a stronger application of burnt sienna, even a little bit of uh, red. And this is going to combine, as it, gravity pulls this down, it's going to um, mix these colors and combine a feeling, a sort of direction to the light, which is a very, uh, a little shadowed on the left side, becoming brighter towards the right hand side and this direction has a, a purpose in the painting as well not just only to create the direction of light but to give a stage for my main figures in other, it's, in other words it's helping me to create a center of interest and that's an important design uh, function in this wash is to create a, a pale backdrop for my strong darks which will follow and this combination really generates a strong center of interest. Uh, you see me working on the right side now, building up a second wash, a second graded wash, which is going to eventually go from a darker, richer application above to a paler, cooler version um, below. This is the primary wash. This is the foundational wash where I'm um, generating a color that will be seen through other colors. You notice I'm using a lot of burnt sienna and um, that red color I'm anticipating is going to glow 
through uh, the second wash that I apply. So there's a sort of um, counterpoint to these washes, a warm followed by a cool, for example. This sort of juxtaposition creates a, a sort of dynamism and um, vibration in the colors. That right-hand wash has been connected to the uh, primary wash below. It's, of course, paler below, but uh, there is a connection via color um, which will help to unify the painting. Whenever I can uh, extend a color into different areas of the painting, I like to do that. And I'm finishing off this um, application um, with a strong pale blue, uh, ultramarine blue, in this corner, which I, I want to kind of key on towards the end of the painting so that we feel some coolness in the shadows. Well, the painting is dried. This first application is dried, allowing me to go back in and work on a dry surface um, and work with uh, hard edges and rough edges to, number one, um, kind of catch the eye and create the sort of contrast that we need for this scene. Number two, you see it's allowing me to record some important brush strokes. And brush strokes are a big part of any painting that I do because they allow me to express um, my feeling, my uh, energy that I have towards the scene, also allows me to express sort of the joy I have in making these sort of marks. So I'm leaving some broken edges and trying to get a calligraphic feel through these awnings. And these, the same sort of um, calligraphic feel is going to extend to the figures below. Uh, have a look at the awnings because it, it, at first glance they might look sort of uniform and, uh, and uh, the same tone, but as they dry, the far, the distant awning is going to pale even more while that main awning is going to stay strong and bold. This helps to create depth in the painting. So I'm now dealing with my center of interest, the main figures, the figures that I hope to kind of communicate uh, the story that's going on here, which is, in case you forgot the title, it's Cicchetti with friends. Cicchetti are uh, very Venetian. They are the sort of tapas, uh, small plates that Venetians enjoy before going to dinner. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's it's a it's a wonderful pastime at the sort of end of the afternoon, four o'clock or so. You notice these chiquetti bars, which, by the way, have great wine as well, and they're the chiquetti are accompanied by wine, and that's what we're witnessing in this neighborhood in Venice is sort of the afternoon custom of getting together with a few friends over a, a cocktail, enjoying Cicchetti, talking about the day, and uh, that will eventually lead into dinner in the evening. So it's my kind of place where you can eat and drink almost all day. Very fun. The brushwork here is important, and I know the application is looking sort of dull, in other words, monochromatic, but as it dries, the blues are going to come out, the reds are going to come out a little more. This is something that I've learned just through trial and error uh, to kind of trust that as it dries, the color content will surface a little more. My main concern, though, is getting a strong uh, tone, tonality to the figures. In other words, high contrast, hard edges against that soft background as well as describing the scene, tabletops, people sitting down, a menu, uh, interaction between a grouping on the periphery and the sort of social interaction that you see uh, at this time of day in this sort of setting, just a lot of conversation, laughing, and, and talking about your day. And It's not uncommon to see um, families gathering and kids playing soccer in this square is one of the more beautiful memories I have of this recent trip to Venice. 
and I'm making an effort to kind of link these passages. I'm working with a fairly large brush, but it has a remarkably fine tip. This is also listed in the description below. I list the, uh, I give you a link to find this brush, which is made by Low Cornell. And it carries a lot of, uh, it holds a lot of pigment in the brush. So I'm going forever with one brushful. If you notice, I just keep making marks, keep making marks. I don't have to return so often to reload the brush. And this is helpful for creating this sort of unified passage. I do go in and pick up a red. I do go in and pick up a blue. Um, but that's, that sort of passage is made easier by using this big brush with a fine tip. Here's a little closer look at the palette and you can see how thick the paint is and how I'm just picking up almost pure color and working into um, the shadows now, building some of those strong shadows which connect the, the tables and are actually cast by the um, tables or the awnings above. Very conscious of the whites that I'm leaving or the bright areas, I'm looking for a pattern here rather than trying to paint anything too precisely. And I continue this sort of uh, pattern building with a similar palette. Uh, at, one, at some point I'm going to be reaching for that neutral tint which is my strongest dark and creating some you know peripheral shadows and some strong darks underneath all of this to uh, really get a high contrast so that the um, contrast in the scene, the strong light in the scene, is carried forward. And all of this is going to now join into uh, the shadow that's cast by this building to the right. I'm going to make an effort to connect all these things. And as I'm building this shadow, I'm very conscious of its edge. Uh, this helps in relating the sort of perspective or point of view that I have. It's a very jagged edge of the tops of the buildings. It creates an interesting shape, in my opinion. I like that interlocking edge that you feel with the sunlit area. And then I can really have fun um, as I connect this edge to the building and connect it to the foreground. I'm adding color and water, trying to get this sort of light bounce that we encounter on these strong days. A little hard to perceive um, in the video. It's even hard to read when you're standing, you know, six inches away from it and painting it. But I know that if I add a little water, I'm going to get a little glow in the shadow. And that's exactly what I'm doing as I build this wash. I'm adding a bit of water, which is going to reveal the area of blue that I painted initially. So there's a big faith factor in all of this, and I don't know how else to describe it except to say that you kind of have to have some foresight to you that's based on your um, experience with watercolor that these things will dry the way you anticipate, because it certainly doesn't look like that when you're painting it. Adding a bit of red to the awning, adding a bit of that same red to some of the figures and the menu board, uh, bouncing that red around a little bit and it plays off of the burnt sienna that we used earlier. Anyway, you can get an idea with this angle on how I'm uh, using a strong pigment. There's, It's almost uh, no water at all, it's just sitting there and my palette is at a strong angle just as my paper is. So uh, the thickness of the paint and what makes this possible too I should mention is that before each painting session I squeeze out a little fresh color. If you're returning to dry color yes you're you're not wasting anything but it's almost impossible to get this rich pigment. So I strongly recommend when you're doing when you're painting your watercolors start off with some fresh color because it's going to be so much easier and the result is going to be closer to what you anticipate 
when you use uh, strong color rather than returning to color that's hardened and trying to mix a strong color from that. Well, we're starting to see some vision of what our finished painting is going to look like. Things are joined now. We're starting to see that glow. We need some to work now. The paper's dry once again, and I'm creating a color for working on the windows in the background, some of the detail elements. I'm using dry brush here, and I'm using a, a very old brush, a brush that's really been beaten up, the same brush that in its new state I use for the figures below, but this one is, is a little unpredictable, and I like that uh, for this sort of dry brush effect. I use a paper towel to take out a lot of the pigment before making these marks so that I have a little more control and they're broken and uh, they give a description of the facade of the building at the same time they recede. They don't uh, take over the painting. And I do the same thing with dry brush on this wall that's close to us creating doorways, uh, the edges of windows, some of the um, moldings, or even some of the decay that you see on the walls is uh, best described with this sort of dry brush, broken stroke that uh, I like to use. The paint is rather thick, but um, I take a lot of that paint out of the brush before applying it to the paper using a paper towel. I've done the same thing into the pavers below, and it's really made this shadow feel even more luminous. Um, and it's given me a lead-in to my main figures. It accomplishes a lot of things. As a final um, part of this image, I'm adding details with a very fine brush, some of the supports for the awnings, uh, details in this uh, building, uh, the figures, uh, there's actually a boy s sitting on a stoop with a soccer ball, which is um, going to come into effect, but not as a main figure. This is kind of a, a peripheral figure, just to give a, just to kind of fill out the painting and make it feel like um, a typical Sunday afternoon gathering with families. Well, we want to do some last touches to our figures to make them stand out and make the sunlight feel a little stronger. And the ones that are our main figures, we're going to add some highlights to, uh, highlights to the shoulders and the top of the head, even if they're in shadow. This is something that you can see when you're in nature. You can see that, yes, the surfaces that face upward, even in shadow, they have a bit of a shine to them or a bit of luminosity. And that's something we're exaggerating here for effect. Now we have to get this fellow who's facing the sun, sort of, and he's met a buddy with his dog, and, and the buddy's giving his dog a few table scraps. Maybe a chiquetti. And some of the figures you see are just ghosty sh brush strokes that are in the, in the distance, trying to give a feeling of a busy scene. Well, it's really coming out, and here's the finished piece, and you can see how the color is, has lightened. I did lift a little color in my main figures so that more of that initial blue is revealed. I also lightened the fellow with the dog so that he's not as prominent. I hope you appreciate and notice how the graded washes combine to give us a sort of luminosity. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope you got something out of this video. In particular, I hope this idea of using a graded wash is having more appeal to you and that you're able to incorporate it into your paintings. I find it one of the foundational aspects of watercolor that can really create a lot of different effects. Join me next week as I'll be in another cafe called the Tate. This one is just down the street from my studio. I'll be developing these, uh, this motif over the next few weeks. 
Have a look at the end of this video as you'll see links to a playlist that will give you more information on using graded washes and other techniques in watercolor. Be sure to like this video and please share it with your friends. See you next week.